Hi guys, this is Christine, your relationship and mindset master doctor and your leverage for change. Today I'm going to address the question that I've had quite a few times and I say it's about time that I address this question because you know it keeps coming up. And the question is why do people stay in toxic relationships? Before I get started on answering this question for you because I have quite a few reasons why this is. I want to point out that I have memberships now on my channel and if you see a join button right below this video you should see a join button um, right there if you click on that you will see the five different levels of membership that I offer at the very basic level which is three dollars and ninety nine cents a month it's really to support my channel so that I can keep producing and giving you free content that will help you to really kind of just kind of navigate your life and to hopefully grow into the person that is more healthy so you can um, enter into healthier relationships. You can know, you know what to look for and know how to perhaps be able to um, see some of the things that you're doing over recurring uh, behaviors that's leading you into these uh, toxic relationships. So guys, um, why do we stay in toxic relationships? There are several reasons. Um, the first one I want to mention is that a lot of us have this savior mentality that we can save someone. You know, we go into a relationship seeing that this person we may they may talk about their uh, really bad childhood. They may believe, talk about how they had a really terrible um, upbringing. And so we go in like we're going to save them. And so we, we go in and we, we try to love them into wholeness, right? Which never works, guys, because you cannot change someone unless they, unless they see that there is something about them that needs changing. And then they have to make that decision to change it themselves. So a lot of us with that savior mentality, we're going to save this person. We're going to love them into wholeness. It never works, right? And so you'll go into this. You stay in there because you're you're figuring, oh my God, um, and then you have this uh, sense of failure when this doesn't work, and you just keep going, but you don't want to give up because you have you you probably um, said to the person, I'll never leave you because I love you so much, and do you know say all these things to them, and so they keep doing what they're doing, not thinking that they need to change, when you keep trying to see if you can change them and save them from all their pain and trauma that they had as children. It does not work. The next thing, guys, the next reason why we stay in toxic relationships is um, we suffer from low self-esteem, right? And this can be from past relationships or it can go as far back. Usually it does start with childhood trauma from maybe the caregivers in our home or it could be our parents, it could be our grandparents, it could be uncles, aunts, whatever it might be. But usually it's the primary caregivers that you have interaction with on a daily basis. You may have seen, you know, you may have, they may have to called you certain things, told you that you're stupid, you'll never amount to anything, that you are ugly, that you're something that makes you feel that you feel that you're unworthy of love or that you'll never um, amount to anything basically. The next reason, so of course, when you have that kind of low self-esteem, you just feel that you cannot get a better partner, so you just stay there. You just stay there because, well, you were lucky enough to get this person who actually wanted to be in a relationship with you, so <clears throat> I better just stay here because uh, I don't think anybody else will want me. That's the low self-esteem that's speaking. The next reason is, um, People remain in a toxic relationship because they have some perceived payoff that is, um, is, um, is that they're going to get because they're in this relationship. It could be that you know they, they have the, their lifestyle has changed. You know now they're living in a beautiful home. They're they're having a beautiful car. They go to beautiful places. You know that kind of thing. Go on beautiful vacations. Although they're miserable all the time, they don't really care. Um, or, or not not they don't care, but they uh, hold the perceived benefits, uh, financial benefits, whatever kind of some kind of opportunity they may get, as higher than their 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 sense of self or their um, 
or the value to themselves. They value these things above their 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 own uh, their themselves, and so they will stay in these relationships because. Uh, this person provides them with a they live in a beautiful home they meet all the you know uh, rich or import what they perceive to be important people they go to these uh, parties and you know that kind of stuff so a lot of people stay in these toxic relationships because of these um, benefits it's really benefits that they perceive they can get from this relationship at the risk of losing their minds they will stay there and suffer so they can wear this uh, wear name brand clothes and live in a certain neighborhood and you know all that stuff right hell no I ain't doing it I'd rather live in a little hut and be happy than to live like that next one um, the other one is the fear of being alone the fear of being alone they and, it's, and it, this is stemming from their insecurities, from their past insecurities. Could be um, when they were children, they just had this abandonment, usually a lot of times when it comes to the attachment style, guys. This attachment, the attachment style that has a real deep-seated fear of being alone is the anxious preoccupied. And um, although the dismissive avoidant and, those and, the, and the fearful avoidant don't want to be alone, they want to be in a relationship, they don't have that really deep-seated fear as the person who is has the anxious preoccupied attachment style because they just feel that they need to be in a relationship it doesn't matter how terrible the relationship is as long as they have a relationship they feel that's they just need it they just need it they're unhappy but they just need to be in there hell no can't do that mm, nah no uh, that's my personal <laughs> thing because um you know sorry now i'll stay by myself until i find somebody that i can live with and who will love me for who i am and who i can love for who they are i'm sorry i'm not doing that um the next thing is um, they believe that this is what a normal relationship looks like you know they've grown up in a traumatic kind of um home environment as children and it was all quarreling and fighting and uh, person one person uh, uh, disrespecting the other and um, telling them they're stupid you're ugly you look like this you look like that uh, why are you wearing that or what you know all these nastiness and maybe verbal mental abuse and just putting the person down constantly and they believe that that is normal so now that they're adults and they're in a relationship that's similar to that they think that's normal because that is all they know kind of sad but true um, the next thing is that they feel uh, they fear uh, abuse um, or reper some repercussions from their partner now these are for um, people who live in an abusive kind of relation in the, you know like the husband might beat them or kill them or whatever it is that the husband might do or the wife might even do it too. I mean, there's some abusive women. It usually is mostly men, but it does, um, there are women to have heard and, and seen, uh, experienced from, from these, um, you know, uh, my, my, my sessions, that there are also females who does this to their husbands. So there, but, but a majority is usually the male doing this to a female partner. All right, and um, so the abuse, they fear some kind of a repercussion. It could be too with a female partner who may earn a lot of money and, um, you know, and the, and the husband does not, and they may fear losing that benefit if they, you know, if they, um, if they leave, right? Still kind of go back to the benefits section, right? And um, for people who, are, who, who um, like for uh, some other couples, it's because they fear uh, repercussion it could be a, more abuse or you know it could be verbal or abuse for their children if they have children it could be because they fear that um, they may now take it out on their kids if they leave they may take it out on the children so that's another dynamic that can happen when when one person is leaving because of abuse physical or sexual or whatever abuse but they're afraid to leave um, their children maybe they can't afford to take the children with them 
or maybe they even realize they, they, they figure that the, the, the partner might come after their children to, to spite them. And you've seen this in the news, right? So um, you've seen this on TV. I've seen it a lot when the one par partner, usually the husband, they'll actually, and, and the wife, they'll hurt the child or, or the, the woman, male or female, they will hurt the children to spite the, um, uh, uh, the partner that leaves. Uh, the next thing <clears throat> that can happen, guys, is um, the next reason why people remain in toxic relationships is that they've been in this relationship for a really long time, years, decades maybe, and they have, they feel that they've put in too much time, too much energy, too much of their financial um, stuff, you know, they've paid um, all of this thing on this house or this car or this, uh, or spent on this relationship, and now if they leave, there's nothing that they will have, right? You know, so they feel that they should, they need to stay in that relationship because of the all the things they've they've already, um, the time that they've spent in the, this relationship, and they feel they need to stay in there to get the benefit of the relationship. Otherwise, they may lose everything. So that's another reason, guys. Um, another reason is that um, some people will choose to focus on the little breadcrumbs that they get from their partner. Because again, it's a matter of low self-esteem and low self-worth because of prior, maybe caregivers, um, the relationship with caregivers or in past relationships. And they feel that they're not worth much of anything. And if they leave, they don't know who they will get, um, you know, and so they prefer to stay with this person <clears throat> and um, accept little breadcrumbs or a little 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 um you know maybe they'll they, the person will take them out to dinner once in 10 years and they'll hold on to that oh he took me out to dinner once in 10 years i'm so he's really a good person you know yeah there are other things that or she's oh yeah you know she cooked a meal for me once oh you know that is so you know they just focus on the one little good thing that happens in the relationship and basically just so ignores or discards everything else that's bad that they do to their partner. Um, the other reason why people stay in toxic relationships is that they actually feel some kind of guilt. You know, they, they, they're, they're individuals who focus on others outside of themselves, <coughs> usually anxious, preoccupied guys. The people pleasers, the people who are always trying to please the other person, putting them on a pedestal, they focus on them so much now that they they have done and, and, and they feel guilty. They, they feel they always have to do for others and not really focus on their needs. And so they feel guilty giving up on this person, right? Because somehow they feel, going back to the first point, that they could fix them and make them better and change and cause them to love them and you know give them the love that they need and be in a healthy relationship. But as I said, you cannot fix someone who doesn't know or recognize that they need to be to change, to have make some changes in the way they interact with themselves and others. The next reason is that, so of course, because it feels familiar. Oh, oh, there's, oh, the other reason is, sorry, the first one, one before this was feeling guilty to, to give up on um, this person because they feel that the person suffered so much. This person is so broken. Oh, it's, I should never, ever, you know, I'd feel bad and guilty if I left this person to suffer in his, or her or whatever pit of hell and um so you know i you know i should just stay in hell with them and suffer through it with them Ugh. nah mm. anyway let me go back to my next one the next thing is that they feel a sense of familiarity this relationship is familiar to them because this is a type of relationship they observed and participated in when they were children, their caregivers, they saw, that's all this, that's the way they saw their caregivers interacting with each other. And they, and, and there's a sense of familiarity that gives them a certain kind of comfort. You know, when you are in a, in a place that is feeling familiar, it makes you feel comfortable. And so they've just latched onto that sense of familiarity as a reason uh, as to why they should not leave this relationship. The next thing is, and this is a big one, guys, and it's the fear of uncertainty after leaving. The fear of uncertainty. Now, 
I think we just give we just give this this thing called uncertainty so much power that we stop ourselves from making changes that we need to make or trying or doing things that we need to do to to achieve our goals of being more whole or more secure or more or or just anything else you know we stop ourselves every single day because of this thing that we call uncertainty and you know I when this uh, pandemic happened, right? Uh, uh, one of the words that was thrown around a lot was, you know, people are so scared because of this, of this uncertainty of what will happen because of this pandemic. Not realizing that every single day before the pandemic happened, you get up in the mornings, you don't know what is going to happen. You go to your bed, you don't know if you're gonna get up the next morning, right? You don't know what's awaiting you the next day. There is always, always a sense of uncertainty, uncertainty in every single day of our lives. Yet, when it comes to making changes and doing something that benefits us, or growing in a, into, or doing, you know, learning something that will help us or benefit us, we shun it because we think, "Oh, I'm not going to do it." It's because suppose I fail. Suppose you don't fail. Have, nobody thinks of that. They, we always tend to go to the negative, right? We always tend to go to the negative, and until we realize that, we will never be able to really overcome that fear of that on uh, that insecurity that we often feel, and which is a re, which is a part of every day, every single day, guys. You drive down the road. Do you know if some crazy man is going to be looking at person, crazy person? I'm sorry, is going to be looking at their phone and 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 run you over? Do you know that if you back out, is your car even going to start? Life is filled with uncertainty. You go out and you buy food at a restaurant. Do you know what the heck they do back there in that in, with that food there? Do you know that you might can't? Do you know if you may get some food poisoning and be sick the whole day? Do you know all of those things? Do you know that if you um, you go take an exam, you know maybe, or you go to the doctor, they might mess up your uh, prescription or even the pharmacist. There is uncertainty everywhere, all around us, and yet. We focus on those things. Um, we, we kind of cherry pick, I believe, the things that we don't want to do, and then there's this sense of uncertainty around it, and the fear that comes with that sense of uncertainty. Because as humans, we like things to be, you know, we like to know things are going to happen. You want to know that when you go and get up in the mornings, you can turn your tap on and water is going to come out, right? And so when it does that, it was like, oh my God, the world is ending, because. Uh, Water didn't come out of my tap this morning, right? I'm going to die, you know, that kind of thing. And so therefore, guys, realize, I think one of the biggest things that we can really do for ourselves is to realize that uncertainty is a part of everyday life and that we need to really realize and recognize that anything that we do is has an element of uncertainty. Leaving a toxic relationship has a certain element of uncertainty, of course. There are things you're gonna to have to change. There are things you're gonna to have to do for yourself. There are things you're gonna to have to learn, but that only serves to make you stronger. These uncertainties, when, when faced, these fears, when faced and approached, is always going to make you stronger. And your self-worth and your self-image is going to improve because now you know Wow, I can handle anything that life throws at me. The biggest fear that we have, guys, is that we cannot handle whatever comes our way. And once we start facing those fears, that is the only time that you can overcome that uh, limiting belief that you will fail. Because you can only, you can only, um, surmount and bypass that fear i mean you can only conquer that fear that's the right word conquer that fear by approaching it and facing it you can't avoid it all right guys i hope that you learned something today from this um this uh recording and um uh please don't forget to check out my uh membership uh uh channel the different one when you hit that join button below and please guys please 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 if you do nothing else 
please like it um, give me that thumbs up and also because apparently it works on some um, algorithm to, to, to make more people see the video and that really helps my channel so please just like um, my video share it if you find that somebody can learn something from this um, video and also please subscribe to my channel so that as soon as and I make a new video you will get um, notification or, or and hit the notification bell as well that helps uh, this is Christine your relationship and mindset master doctor and your leverage for change until next time guys take care and keep growing bye bye